Well, this is the moment my chain started spooling up. And to be full disclosure here, I've been mostly using my Maslow for medium small things and mostly been cutting in the middle of the board. Uh, but I had a garden shed that has a plywood door. I wanted to rebuild the door. So it's 82 5 eighths by 32 wide. And so I went ahead and loaded up, loaded up this plywood on there. And I was watching it, and I've always been suspicious of my attention of my bungee cord. because I, I, I never liked it watching it rattle on top of the other chain and all that here, too. But I was watching it, and right here, it just did not disengage, not up tension, and started spooling up um, on the uh, on the wheel. And I was probably seconds away of releasing the blue smoke or stripping gear or something or both. And so I quickly got this thing shut off, but uh, I thought, oh, there's got to be a better way. So this is what I came up with. My goals here, basically, I wanted to completely eliminate bungees or springs. I want to keep constant tension on the chain all the time here, too. And also keep the chain on the same plane as the sprocket. Uh, chains don't like lateral motion. They only flex and bend, okay? I also wanted to use non-critical space, and, and that means... Uh, my shop's not so huge, and so basically I I didn't want the chain to the side hanging down for a couple reasons. And I've already been fighting with one chain, to get loading up a piece of plywood. I didn't want to do a fight with a second chain here, too. And of course, I want to have full use of my 4 by 8 sheets and two, which means I want full access to the whole thing. So this is what I came up with. Um, this is running at three times normal speed. And you can see up here, these are these little mobile sleds I built. And these things just run back and forth. And you can see this better inside here, too. This actually has a pulley in the back that keeps the tension on the chain. Here's one on the other side over here. And here's the center sled I have here. It's free to move. All these pieces are free to move. Um, and I have a weight, two weights here that are tied up to the back. Uh, which I'll show you in a couple of minutes here too, that actually they're the ones that keep the tension. But the weights really aren't that heavy. They're only about two and a half pounds or so that, uh, per, per side. And again, when this thing's moved back and forth, any lateral motion really kind of keeps it together. It's not until you're moving up and down that you're actually seeing the um, expansion or contraction of the space here too. So, but... Um, the, the the ropes up here, that's just nylon ropes. Um, and yeah, I've been I've been playing around with this for a few hours now. And I'm really kinda happy how well this has turned out then too. So and I probably could have made these things out of aluminum. Uh, sorry, out of out of plywood. But um I like the aluminum. It's very, very um durable, cheap. Um and I'll go here real quickly I'm on what how this was made part by part here too. So, um, and this is and my boards in the stock 13 to 14 degrees and and this is the plane I was talking about here too. If I have the chain hanging down, that's why I didn't want to go this route. Well, I got then I'm trying to flex this chain laterally 13 to 14 degrees, especially if it's hanging down. Well, that's a fulcrum and that's probably going to wear the chain quickly there too. And I just I didn't want to go this route. That's why I wanted to have this non-critical area by keeping an area that I wasn't using behind the board. So this is this is a front view of this little moving sled I made. Again, it's one and a half inch by quarter inch uh, aluminum. I just welded together here too. Um, here's the side view. Um, this thing uses these. I, I just printed up some um, in PLA some of these bearings. Now some of these pulleys actually have round bottoms. And I use those things for the chain as well as the ropes. But these I redesigned with square bottoms to fit this railing here too. Now uh, I just all these things are just basically a press fit a, um, a 608 bearing. I'll show you that in a couple seconds here. There's the back view of it here too. But and, and originally I tried to use a sprocket here, and I realized I don't need a sprocket here. It was just complicating things here too. So I just went ahead and put a big uh, a pulley on here too that fits it really well. I've had absolutely no problem with this at all here too. Um, but here shows you the line of pulls and the weight here too. Uh, and it's take, always putting attention because this is free to move. Here's the pulleys I have and the bearings I use. and. Uh, um, these things are dirt cheap. I'll, however, read the reviews because quality really varies on Amazon here, too. These are these skateboard bearing 608, and 
when I print these off, they're printed just to the right size, and I have to use a vise and a spacer to press fit these in. And you can see there's a little, there's a little recess here too, and that's not under compression because it's beyond that point. And I'm hoping that it kind of holds it in place here, but these are pretty hard to put into place. I've never had any problem cracking or anything here too, so I'm just like, meh. Yeah, if it's not broken, I'm not going to fix it. So I'm, I'm kind of happy how these are turned out then too. So um, I did have to make this particular um, lift here to hold the chain here too. And again, I just welded up some aluminum here too. And I also realized that uh, do pull or whatever, I had to realign my pull, my, my sprockets here because somehow my motor got off a little bit here too. And I think that the better we line our sprockets up, the more... Uh, the better the chain's going to like that then too. So, and this is this, this little uh, spacer that came with the Maslow kit. I figure I'm going to use that here just to sort of let that roll on top here as well. So, um, this is the right hand side. Of course, there's a left hand side down there as well. Um, this is the center device. Now, originally I thought about, well, if I just have a solid device that does not roll, well, that was going to limit my space, how much I can use on my board. And uh, this one here basically is four inches by six inches. Uh, just as I had a big chunk of aluminum left over from an earlier project, which I welded one and a half inch piece on by a quarter and real carefully drilled the holes. In fact, I made a template. So I can make these things spacing. They're not tight, but they're not loose. They're just just about right and spot on, I think, is the phrase then too. So if I get this thing rolling, it will roll quite a far, <laughs> pretty far before it kind of comes to rest. So... I'm pretty happy how easy it is to do here. Now this railing that rolls on, this is the front railing. Uh, this is 10 foot long. Uh, it's 1 8 inch by 1 inch aluminum, which I just used two half inch nuts underneath these screws to kind of give it some lift and, and keep the spacing off here too. And I did have to put it at the top, of course, because if I put it in the bottom here where I tried originally, well, the chain can hit that. I and mean, when you get way to one extreme to the other then too. So uh, here's the side view that maybe describes it a little bit better here too. This is the, the line coming from the movable sled. It redirects the pull down to the weights on the back. And... Um, I, I didn't want to have this too far back. I, I could cut this off, but I don't know, I might not. Um, so it clears things, and the further I got this thing away here, of course, the more lever arm. And I realized I did have to put a secondary rail in the back here because this front railing is good for uh, rolling, but there's, there's, there's no lateral support here, too. So that's what this back railing here is, too. I, I added another one, and I'll show you these little spacers. Um, these little spacers are just clip on the top piece of the 2 by 4 hold this railing in back, and um, it was a pretty simple thing to do then as well. This is the same. All these bearings, even they're different colors, they're all the same one. I just changed uh, my PLA filament here too. So um, here's the little spacers. Again, th they're on th thing of Ursa too. So uh, I just pre-drilled the holes in the aluminum, and they're, I think, every 6 inches along the way then too. So Now here's a video basically of this moving back and forth. Again, this is at three times the normal speed. Uh, again, since you're moving laterally, there's really no difference. And there is a little bit of perspective, so it looks like it's way to the right. And it is a little bit to the right, but not as much as, to say, as it looks here, too. And that's just because I got the weights tied off a little bit different height than, too. I can kind of recorrect it, redirect that, too. So, but... Um, yeah, it was... Um, an interesting challenge, but uh, like I said, I'm using non-used space, and uh, I don't have too much of a problem how this has turned out in two. So, okay, let's get over here and get this done here. Okay, here's my weights in the back. Now, these are half-inch iron pipe. Uh, it's about, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 inches long, something like that I can measure them. But they're, they're about two pounds each. I already had this pipe, and uh, I went ahead and... Um, Went to a local shooting shop and got some lead shot and filled them full of lead shot. And they're still only two pounds a piece. Um, they're not the biggest diameter. I, I wanted to kind of keep them kind of slender so they wouldn't hit, hit each other. Because I did have some space problems at the top then too. And the reason for this particular adaptation the bottom here too, I wanted to keep this center cart centered. 
And so if one of these gets a little higher, well, it's going to pull a little bit more on this side. And with all things being equal, every force has an equal and opposite reaction. It will then pull more on that side and redirect that center cart back again here, too. So, so that worked pretty good then, too. So, and again, this is tied down to the bottom too far. And again, I don't really have to have that much space. Um, this, is, this is starting with the sled all the way in the bottom of the Maslow here too. It starts at 22 and again this is three times the normal speed here too and um, so I'm really only looking at something like I think um, 12 inches of um, height I need to run these weights here too so it started at 22 and there's 34 and that if I look up the top here I'll see my sled is all the way up to the top peeking over the top here too so and again I'll probably retire these things just so I don't have to have the um, 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 vacuum cleaner being hit by the weights all the time here too so well that's it I hope this kind of helps out a little bit here too so um, yeah I'm really happy how well this turned out for parts um, if I have to if I start seeing some uh, unusual wear in the pulleys I might reprint them in, in a ABS if you're familiar with Lego blocks so Lego blocks is ABS plastic um, but this is PLA and PLA does a pretty good job making a hard surface now I did print these things at 100% fill rate so I didn't want any compression setting or something so uh, and again that's, that's cents pennies more for, for each pulley here too and didn't even add that much time to the printing process here too so um but yeah so anyway i'm going to try next to get rid of this down here um I don't know. You can see I'll get a little bit of rounded corner here, too. I might be able to come up with a way to get some extra tension on the bottom down here, too. But um, that's a little more thought process. Um, anyway. So anyway, hope this helps. Um, it does take a little bit of construction and thinking through. But uh, like I said, it completely eliminated any chain on the side. Uh, constant tension. And hey, no bungees. <laughs> so anyway, have a good day.